Hi, a quick word about how and why children simply cannot misbehave. I know this is a challenging concept and I know that for some people this is just not going to sit with them and that's fine and that's fine. I totally understand it. It does sound very left field, shall we say. But if you think about it, a child's brain isn't going to fully form until they are nearly late 20s, they reckon for men even nearly 30. So they're going to make mistakes. They're going to be very impulsive because, especially because the, the front part of the brain, that is the last part to form, uh, it's called the prefrontal cortex. And that is the bit that helps us delay our impulses. And, you know, as an adult, and my prefrontal cortex is very fully formed, I can't resist things that I love that are in my house. So for example, at the moment, I have mince pies in my cupboard. They are calling my name every day. My rational brain says, don't have one, you don't need one, it's full of calories. But my emotional brain says, Oh, go on it's it's been Christmas you deserve one it gives me lots of emotional reasons now I could control that impulse but I choose not to because I can rationalize it all through a child can't so children operate very much in the moment they're very yeah they're, they're driven by impulses and I was just thinking as I, as I started on my walk about I remember so clearly, so clearly knowing as a child that I should not touch my poor mum's makeup. Now, you know, there was no money when we were growing up, um, one of five children. I would imagine my poor mum's makeup must have been so precious to her and she used it every day. So yeah, it, it was something really important to her. And I can still remember as a child so intellectually, I would have known this, I would have been told this, I would have been warned about this. But of course, in the moment of the day that I was deep in her makeup bag, putting it all on, it just, it just didn't enter my mind because my impulse was whatever my imaginary game I was playing or whatever it was at that moment, it involved putting makeup on my face. And I can still, in fact, it makes me feel sick when I think of it being engrossed and my mum quite rightly, well, maybe not rightly, but understandably coming up behind me and yelling at me. I can't remember if she hit me or whatever. And, and I, I get it, but it had such a profound impact on me. I've never forgotten it. And then I thought, oh, another thing I remember was um, a time when I tried to smoke some of her cigarettes. Now, again, in the moment, I'm a child. I haven't got the capacity to intellectually remember that I'm not supposed to do it. I mean, I kind of had had a sense that it was a bit naughty, as I would have been told. But it, I don't know. You, you, when you're a child, you just do stuff, is my point. And um, I remember, again, getting caught, most likely getting smacked. Um, it was a big drama because, again, I couldn't understand they didn't have any money and you know, all, all these things. And actually, I think it was a Sunday. And in those days, you couldn't just go out and buy more cigarettes. So, but these are fundamental things that children just do. Children do stuff. It's in the job description. It's in very small print. And our job is to calm ourselves down because of course we want to have conversations with children later on when everybody's calmed down about you know feelings about smoking cigarettes uh, maybe some stuff around health as well although probably if you're smoking them as a parent that's not really going to work is it but you know exploring reasons why we don't take other people's things the feelings that my mum would have had checking in why was i why was i driven to even do it be curious but be kind when you're being curious don't get yourself in a state and think, oh, my child is so badly behaved, they're stealing my cigarettes. That takes you down a really dark, dark route. And it, you know, it starts making you think about your child and their behavior in a way that they never intended it. They just live in the moment. 
they forgot they were so excited it was part of their game who knows what it honestly does not matter it does not mean your child is going to grow up to be a thief i am not a thief um, i was very impulse driven and yeah who knows i've never stolen any makeup i've never stolen any cigarettes you get my point it's always about us being able to calm ourselves down and really trust and know that the amazing science that there is has delivered to us in such an incredible way that we do not need to be mean to children in order to teach them about life, about how to behave, about how to show up for other people. In fact, in terms of brain development, the calmer and kinder that, that we are, then the sooner that their intelligent brain gets back online and we can have those conversations that really are about teaching them and exploring, you know, the feelings that my mum might have had about losing her last precious cigarette or whatever it was. So I, I, know, I know I've been posting things lately that are really upsetting people and that's never my intention, but having spent 28 years thinking about this, doing this, studying this, I can't not share what I know to be absolutely categorically scientifically true, never mind morally and emotionally. So I hope that helps. I hope that reassures you that honestly you can raise the most respectful, um, if you want them to be hardworking, hardworking individuals, very loving, good at relationships, uh, and so many other things I can't remember. I know I've conducted my own 28 year experiment and yeah, it's definitely a thing. Plus it's part of the work that I do and all the parents I work with, once they make this shift and it's not easy because we most of us weren't raised that way, they see the same. They see their children showing up in ways that they never dreamt could happen when they were being stern with them and you know all the other things that people think children need. What children always need is our calmness, our kindness, to yeah, learn about feelings, what feelings they had, what other people's feelings had. And then of course we're gonna later on when their intelligent brain is online, we're gonna explore alternatives because we are there to help them learn about life and how to live it and yeah, how to be, I don't know what a good person is, but let's say a good person. <laughs> So I hope that helps settle everybody down and, you know, just, just think about it. I know it can seem very scary because it isn't traditional, but it is very, very research based. And personally, I find it just sits well in my heart and it does many of the parents I work with too.